Okay, I'm going to share a word with you this morning quickly. So get your Bibles out and go to, uh, uh, let's start in Jeremiah chapter 29 this morning. The book of Jer- Jeremiah 29, verse 11, may be something that's familiar to you, may not. It says in, Je- in, in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Listen to what he's saying here. Listen to this verse. God is saying, I know what I'm thinking about you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you'll call upon me and go and pray to me. And I'm going to listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Wow. I want to tell you just a simple thing this morning. Each one of you in here today, listening and everybody watching out there, I want you to understand something. You have a destiny with God. You have a future and you have a hope. Now listen to me. A lot of times when you say the word destiny, everybody thinks about, oh, it's, you know, I'm destined for this greatness, or I'm destined for this, or I'm destined for that. Ernie, listen to me. You were destined in your life. You learned how to run a backhoe all your life. You thought, I just, you know, it's just what I did, maybe. Yeah, I just how it came about. Oh, it's just whatever went on. No, you were destined for that time and that appointment to go up on the side of the hill and use your skills as a backhoe operator to dig holes because it was, just imagine, we would not have finished. If you didn't have that. Now, that's a part of your destiny. They say, oh, well, you know, everybody, you know, there's a lot of people that could, could run a backhoe. But they weren't there. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning, church? You got to live in your life knowing that you have a destiny with God. That you're there at that moment, at that time, at that place because God has so ordained your steps and prepared your ways and you listened to his voice. You listened to what he was calling you to do and you were there at the place you were supposed to be by miracle actually because you were just trying to be obedient to God. Woo! Come on now. The title of this message is this morning, you've got to change the song in your head. How many of you ever got a stupid song in your head? Oh my goodness, when my grandkids come over, it is like two days of soul cleansing to try to get the song out of your head. How come? Radio plays, you can hear other songs, turn it off, what is that stupid song that comes back in your head? Right? Well, listen to me. Some of you in here have got a song playing in your head that is not of God. you got a song that continually plays in your head that says, Oh, yeah, that's God loves them, but I don't think he loves me. you got a song playing in your head that the devil has set up the recording, put it completely on, that says you can't do it, you can't make it, and God's not with you. And you got to shut it up. You got to find the record, find the CD, and you got to break that baby. Because you have a destiny to accomplish things for God. And when that record's playing in your head, oh, who am I? Oh, what can I do? Oh, but you know what I did last night. Oh, you know, God doesn't, I don't think God loves me because of this. Listen to me, you're getting off track. Listen to me. I know God loves me. I know it. You know how I know it? Because I read it in the Bible, and God's not a liar. So if God said he loves me, and I have a record playing inside of my head that says, I don't think God loves me, 
What's wrong with me? I'm listening to the wrong word. And who am I in my arrogance to stand up into the face of God and say, well, I just don't believe what your word said is true. Who do we think we are to say that the blood of Jesus does not wash away our sins? Who are we to say that, that, that our sins are not washed as white as snow? Who are we to go before the throne of God with this stupid song playing in our head, with the recording going off in our soul, and tell God that we don't know that we can trust Him because, you know, we, we don't know. We, we, we got this other song in our head. Who are we to do that? Do you see the arrogance in that church? If I was to come up and say, oh, listen, I want to bless you. And you said, no, you don't. You ain't going to do nothing. And I said, no, I really I'm going to bless you. And you said, no, I'm not. I mean, after a while, I'd probably just say to you, stupid idiot, get out of here. <laughs> are you with me? So who am I to go before God when God says, oh, I love you with an everlasting love. And I've called you with my loving kindness. Oh, God, I just don't see how you can forgive me. Because you got the wrong song in your head. You're playing over the wrong song in your head. He says that you have a future and a hope. You have a destiny. What destiny means, if you go look it up in the Webster Dictionary, yes, there's, there's multiple meanings, but one of the meanings for destiny, which is what I'm telling you today, is that you have a future. So what destiny means, that there's events coming in your future, and those events coming in your future are good events. If, you're gonna, if you'll believe God, if you'll trust in Him, if you'll walk with Him, that's glory. I had the, the privilege of talking to some of the interns there one evening. I sat down, and we were through with work, and, and uh, Laura and I were staying at the orphanage. And so I had, the interns were there, and so they started talking to me about God and about different things. And, uh, man, I have forgotten how old I've gotten. You know, and you're talking with all these kids that are 16 to 20, and, uh, and, and I guess I do. I am like Moses. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like Moses, but I guess in that, from where they are and where I'm at, you know, and I started telling them stories of the things that I'd seen God do in life and how he'd moved in our lives and what I'd seen and the healings and the miracles and the things. And I said, man, kids, I don't have enough time. I mean, I could, I could sit here and write you a you know, two volumes of books of all the things that I have seen God do in my life. I said, I'm a blessed man. I'm, I'm the richest man in the face of the earth because of what God has done in my life. I'm telling you, you this is what y'all could have. And then I began telling you, you got to get in the Word. You got to read your Bibles. This is how you're going to read them. You better do it. If you don't do it, well, you, you, you're, you're stupid. Told them straight up, you know, just worked on them because they're, they're young and they're hungry for God, but they didn't know anything. Right. And I want to tell you something. I believe that this church that you're sitting in right now, for those of you that are watching this, this broadcast, I believe God's got a special hand on us. And I believe that God mightily wants to use each and every one of you in a mighty and a, amazing way. And he wants to do things that blow your minds. He wants to do things that just so totally and completely shock you in life if you'll just begin to believe and trust in him because it's in your destiny. Look at the person beside you and say, you, you have a destiny. I want you to go to Psalms 37. You're not going to walk in your destiny, though, if you've got the wrong song in your head. You're not going to walk in the destiny, your destiny. If you've got the wrong song playing over and over and over and over and over and over in your head. So I want to show you how to break it. I want to show you how to find the record and break it right quick. Psalms 37, great psalm here. 
I want you to look at start in verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Listen to me. You're not going to see, you're not going to change the record in your head when you want to do evil. You say, well, I don't want to do evil. Oh, come on now. Come on now. If you, you, you've thought about it, if oh, so-and-so steps out in the road, you might just run over him. If you, you've really played that scenario, if he says this, I'm going to say that, then I'm going to do this, and he's going to do that, and then I'm going to do this. and I'm, All that's... You got to understand someone in the Bible when it calls evil. Yes, there's wickedness going on. All the things going on this terrorism is wickedness. It's listen, listen. I, I want to say it. Everybody out there watching, listening. Everybody here today. I, I want you to understand something. The things that are going on with the terrorist attack. It's demonic. It is purely 100 percent of the devil. You do not take a, a vehicle and run over 84 people if it, you're not demonically influenced. You're seeing the manifestations of the demonic forces finding a host, finding a person that they can work through and act out what they want to act out. It's of the devil. All right? That's evil. But I'm talking about the things, the jealousies, the, the uh, heck, even the insecurities. The things in your life that, that don't have faith attached to it. The things in life that when, when, when you should be rising up as, as the victorious conqueror, but yet you've got the song playing in your head, and so you lay down. I, you know, praise God for my raising and what's on the inside of me. I am never laying down my arms. And I mean that physically and spiritually. When I see things that are not right, I want to go to war. You with me? He says, trust the Lord and do good. So what does he mean? He says, well, listen, you've got to put your faith in your trust. You want to start stopping that record from playing in your head, that song from playing in your head, telling you the wrong thing. You're going to have to purpose in your heart that you want to live godly. Listen to me, I want to live godly. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't, want to, I, don't want to, I don't want to have power and rule over people. I just want to be Robert and tell people about Jesus. Are you with me? You've got to set it aside in your heart that you want to do right. You want to live godly. Do good. And put your trust in him. All right, look at the next thing he says here. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. How do you delight yourself in the Lord? How do you delight yourself in the Lord? Well, one way, delighting yourself in the Lord, is that when you begin to read the Word, and you begin to see how, how amazing God is. I mean, folks, think about it this morning. You've got a God who absolutely loves you. He sent his son to die for your sins. He gave you grace and mercy. And all he really wants you to do is to love him. And then he's going to give you everything that you desire on earth. That's what his word says. He's going to give you everything that you desire on earth. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be healthy. And then he's going to make sure that you have a mansion waiting for you. When you get to heaven, who wouldn't want that? Well, it's not that easy. It really should be. We, through only our own doubt and unbelief and our own religious minds, have made it complicated. Well, you know, God sometimes, he doesn't do that. That's not my God. God's not evil. He's not sitting on the throne and saying, okay, let's just do this, Jesus. How about today? I just woke up this morning. I'm kind of on the bad side of the bed. Let's, find the, let's throw as many stumbling blocks in front of people and believing us that they can't and see who makes it. That's how some people's Christianity is. 
God is up there that morning. Which side of the bed he woke up on is how your day is going to go. He's going to throw as many obstacles in the way. He's going to put all that stuff in the way, and it, that's what it's going to be. Listen, we give the devil way too much glory. Every time something bad goes wrong, I said, all the devil's after me. Well, listen, if, if, what can he do compared to what God can do? He's a, he's, a, he's a created being. He's a fallen being. And God Almighty is the one who made him. And that sucker's got more power than, than we do. Yes, well, God is just sitting there waiting for the time to move. I don't know where your theology comes from. Obviously, you've never read the Bible. Obviously, you've been reading materials from church groups, not the Bible. Go get a Bible and read it. Find out about this awesome, amazing, great God who loves you and cares so much for you. I said this in Guatemala. I said here, you can go to Walmart and buy a Bible. The words of eternal life are sitting right there in Walmart. You could read it, open it up, and read what it says in there. And your whole life could be changed. And it's sitting there in Walmart, but they don't have a big glory sign around it. It's over there with guns and ammo and, you know, whatever. But it's the words of life. Change your life, set you free. Set you on a course to heaven. Heal your body. Heal your soul. It's in Walmart. Are y'all with me? That same paperback edition does just as good as one that's leather. Because it's not about the paper and it's not about the ink and it's not about the cover. It's about the words that God speaks to each and every one of us that has the ability to leap off that page into your heart and change your life. But we'll go home and watch a soap opera. We'll go home and entertain ourselves with movies. We'll go home and gripe and complain and listen to this stupid song playing in our head and never pick up the word of life and say, oh, God, look, you said if I delight myself in you, you would give me the desires of my heart. But I'd rather sit and worry. I would rather sit and complain. Hello? Yeah, we're probably, I, I know I'm just speaking to everybody out there watching. I mean, you know, not. Verse 5 says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he'll bring it to pass. You know what that word commit means? You know, you think that commit, you know, like, you know, like you, okay, yes, I'm going to do it. You committed. But that word commit, it means to roll it off on. In other words, you stop worrying I love the scripture, you know, where he says, you're not going to add one cubit to your stature. You're not going to make yourself one inch taller by worrying. I never have thought of that. We don't make ourselves taller, but we do make ourselves wider by worrying. (laughs) Now, that's a fact, huh? (laughs) Worrying makes us wider. Not taller, because if it make us taller, then we'd be thinner. I've always said, I don't have a weight problem, I've got a height problem. If I was taller, I'd be the right weight. It's ridiculous. But I've prayed for a long time to grow, but I, I've only been growing in width, not height. The word means to roll it off on. You are not equipped to worry. You're not equipped to worry. Stress will kill you. A lot of times people come to me and say, man, you do so much. How do you, how can you just handle the stress of it? And sometimes I do get overwhelmed. But the reason why I can do what I do is because I just bounce through the day and believe God. Because i got to trust in him. I, I, I can't make this life happen. What am I doing? I'm just the preacher. And I could come up here and, and in my natural ability try to talk to you. And y'all are going to get really bored and leave. If I'm not anointed and the spirit of God's not with me, it's not going to do any good. I'm not that good of a public speaker. 
the truth. It's the truth. I'm always amazed when people say, oh, man, you're saying that, and you preach that message that just so spoke to my heart, this, this, and that. And I was like, really? Because I know it's not me. It's the Holy Ghost. Okay? you got to get it off of you. You're not equipped to worry. You're not made in, in the ability to worry. Whenever you feel pressure and you feel worry come upon you, all that is is a test, the litmus test, the bell ringing inside of you that you're not trusting in God. You have not prayed. You have not rolled it off on the Lord. You want to break that song on the inside of your head? You've got to get your burdens off of you and on to Jesus. Get the anointing of God on you, the Spirit of God on you, so that you can live like you're supposed to be. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Wow. Wow. You know, uh, why, why you're, while I'm telling you this, go to Hebrews chapter 4. I want to finish up here. When, when I was growing up, I, you know, I had a lot of fight in me, but I wasn't the biggest person in the world. So I quickly, quickly, quickly made friends with the biggest people that I possibly could find. So I was the mouth. They were the muscle. And I rested in that because I knew they had my back. So I could say whatever and take a couple of steps back and say, you want a piece of me? Because I had some big boys with me. That is what you are supposed to do with God. You were supposed to step back and say to the devil, you're really going to tear off a piece of me? I got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost all on my side. I got angels following me. I got all this stuff going on. And you are going to tear off a piece of me? That's what it means right there when he says to rest in the Lord. Let me show you again right here. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Let us just read verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. The thing you're supposed to be afraid of is that you're not resting in the Lord. Not, not the obstacle that's in front of you. You're, spo- you're, not, you're not supposed to fear it. You're supposed to fear not trusting in the Lord, not resting in Him. If you're going to wake up and be biting your fingernails about anything, say, oh, God, I'm, I really haven't prayed, really haven't read enough word. I, I need to, you know, I'm not resting in the Lord. I'm, I'm worrying. I'm fretting. What's wrong with me? This is what I'm afraid of. Lord, forgive me. Uh, what am I doing? See, I do that sometimes. I get caught up myself in the, in the things that are going on, and I'm trying to fix it, and I'm trying to make it work. And then all of a sudden I stop and say, oh, Jesus, what have I done? Lord, forgive me. Uh, I can't make this happen. It's got to be a move of your spirit. Father, forgive me. I, I'm sorry. I repent because I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to make it work, and I'm getting out of your rest that you've given for me. He says, For indeed the gospel was preached unto us as well as unto them, but the word, hear this, the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. In other words, God told them, but they didn't believe it was true. Folks, those people wandered for 40 years and died in the wilderness and never walked in the promise of God. Do you want to be in that company? Just listen to this. Let me put this to you in, in in a kind of a strong way. The Bible says that believers go to heaven, right? And so we always put that as being, oh, yes, they believe, they believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Right? And it says the unbelievers are cast into the lake of fire. And we always say, 
Oh, that's the people that didn't believe in Jesus. You ever taken that a little more literal? When I say I'm a believer, I want to be a total believer. You with me? I don't want to be walking in half believing and half unbelieving. I want to be totally and completely relying on God for everything in my life. For the breath in my lungs, to the finances, to the, to the, you know, the health, to the whatever in my life. I want to be believing God. God, you're going to do this. You're going to make this happen. I don't know how it's going to work. You're going to make it happen. We were on the site up there digging, and, and it started raining. So, you know, I mean, the great man of faith and power that I am, turn around, speak to the heavens. It got harder. <laughs> you know, and it's a, real, it's a real sucking of your faith out the end of your toes when you speak to the mountains. In the name of Jesus, I command this rain to go. It gets harder. And then I commanded the ground to dry up. And it was so slick. You just cannot imagine this ground. It's like our black gumbo soil we have around here. But it has just got enough clay. It is just slick. You can't stand up. People started slipping and falling. We had these giant 10 by 10 by 7 foot deep holes. And I thought, God, if anybody falls in that thing, we'll never get them out. Because we're not going to be able to pull them up. It's too slickery here. Ernie's trying to run the, the, the backhoe, and, 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 and it got to where there was no driving the backhoe because the wheels just spin. He couldn't go anywhere. He just had to basically grab with the bucket and drag himself to where he needed to be because we didn't stop. We just humped up like some old sheep in the, in the rainstorm, you know, pulled our hats down and just stood there. Found out that all of our rain jackets that said they're waterproof, that doesn't, it's a lie. <laughs> And we stood there in the rain and kept digging in the dirt because it wasn't wet. It's their ground is really strange. It wasn't wet in the bottom of the hole. So we're literally in a rainstorm digging dirt that comes out dry dirt, dropping it down, and it turns to soupy mud. He said, well, why didn't God stop the rain? That ain't my business. It's my business to stand up and speak to it and do my part, speak to the mountains, and then walk through whatever's there. And you know what we did? We just tucked our pants in our boots, pulled our hats down, zipped up a wet jacket, (laughs) and stood there and shivered. But we kept digging. We kept moving forward. Folks, that's the way it is in life. Listen to me. If you're going to enter in the rest of God, sometimes it takes some some pushing. It takes some some, some, some difficult things that you just stand and you say, you know, by God, nothing's going to stop me. I'm going through this. I'm going to come out on the other end. And then all of a sudden you start to feel that peace and that rest. You feel that peace and that rest. And so church, I'm telling you this morning, get that song out of your head. Get the one that out of your head that tells you you're nothing. And start listening to the record of God singing your praises and glory because you believe in Jesus. Start living and entering into his rest. Start rolling your cares and your burdens off over on him. Start realizing Jeremiah 29, 11, he's got a great future and a hope for you. You've got a a destiny with God. Wake up in the morning and profess it out of your mouth. I am destined for greatness today. Because God is with me. Change the record in your head. Amen? Amen. Look at the person beside you and say, you can do it. Now stand with me if you would. For everyone out there that's listening today and everyone that's in here, I just want you to know, you can change your destiny because God gave you a free will. All you've got to do is call upon the name of Jesus. All you've got to do is cry out to Him and I'm telling you, Because it's in the Word, because the Bible says so. The Spirit of God will come into you. He'll touch your life. He'll change your heart. He will set you free. You may be addicted. You may be bound. You may be at the worst place of your life. But I'm telling you what, right now, when you call upon the name of Jesus, the Bible says you're not going to be ashamed. That He's going to come into your life. He's going to bless you, and He's going to help you. All those things in life that you may have been told, all the things in life you may have been believing that are just lies and are wrong, get them out, church. Listen to me. Get them out of your head. 
Quit thinking that. Know that this great God of heaven will come in there. He'll touch you. He'll bless you. He'll save you. Amen? Amen. Can I have my prayer team come up here, if you would, please? And, and, and pastoral team, whoever's up here this morning for prayer. If you're in here today and you need prayer, we're here for you. I'm telling you the God of miracles is alive and well. I'm telling you that today, no matter where you are, you need to be rolling some burdens off on the Lord. And if these people can help you through it, then, then get up here and let them pray with you. Amen? If you're out there listening right now, just call on Jesus wherever you are. He'll touch you. He'll bless you. He'll heal you. He'll set you free. He'll set you free. If you're in here today and you're not sure if you're saved, you don't know for sure if Jesus is the Lord and Savior your life, you're not sure that if you died, you'd go to heaven. But you're excited this morning, you feel something beating down on the inside of your heart. Well, you need to get out of your chair. As soon as I close in prayer, I need you to walk up here and you need to get one of these people to pray with you. Amen? Amen. So take that person's hand beside you. Father, I declare today, in Jesus' mighty name, that these people are determined to change the record playing in their head, the song. It's not going to be a song that the devil made up. It's going to be a song of victory, a song of us serving our God. They're going to hear that record playing, and it's going to bring joy to their hearts. They're going to trust in you. They're going to rely upon you. They're going to roll their cares off over on you. They're going to delight in you, Lord, and I thank you. You're going to give each and every one of them the desires of your heart. So, Lord, bless them today. Put your hand upon them. I declare right now in the name of Jesus by the anointing of God that's over this church and over my life, I break every demonic stronghold in everyone's mind of every song that's playing right now, of everyone that's, that's been discouraged and dismayed, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now, as of today, the anointing of God rests upon the people, rests upon everyone out there listening right now, and they are set free. They're set free by the power of God. So, Lord, I praise you for it, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you.